I guess moving forward, where are you at with with your situation? Because we mentioned diversity and what I always find fascinating is this is a mantra that so many people say, but when it comes to diversity of thought, we have zero tolerance. We talk about tolerance, we talk about diversity, but it has to be within these very fine parameters mm-hmm. of of the people that are in charge. So you can't have diversity of thought. Again, you have to kind of move lockstep. Where, where, where was I going? Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um, so when it comes to, oh, and tolerance. And then when it comes to tolerating people that kind of descend, like there doesn't seem to be a lot of that either. So someone in your position um, that lost their job and, or and lost I mean, you got kicked out of university. Like that's where you're supposed to go to think and kind of like tackle big ideas. Um, like, where do you go? What are what can you do? I mean, it's it's pretty terrifying, you know. Of, of all places that should have free and open debate, it's it's educational institutions. And you know, I, I wasn't going around shouting abuse, uh, you know, swearing, being aggressive, shutting people down. I was simply saying I've got some concerns about children. You know, can we? Can we talk about it? So the fact that I was expelled for that really is quite concerning. It's it's going to take litigation, unfortunately, um, to kind of teach these organisations that they can't get away with this, you know. And I've had a lot of students reach out to me who have said that they've put their training on hold pending the outcome of my case because they're, they're too scared that the exact same thing uh, is going to happen to them as well. So it's unfortunate, but I, I think... Probably more people will need to be cancelled until this actually shifts, you know. We need to try and create a bit of a wave of people feeling confident enough to, to, to speak out. But even within the debate now, there's still people trying to cancel each other. And, it, you know, it's something that I struggle with because I think I, I got into this to speak about children. There are significant issues around the impact on women's rights, um, you know, safe spaces for women, fairness in sports. Etc. And I do spend a lot of time thinking and talking about those because they're also important. But I, I find that there's quite a lot of women's rights activists who will basically say to me, you know, shut up and stay out of it because you're a man and this doesn't concern you. And I, I, I don't get the benefit of that. You know, we're, we're kind of on the same side here. And when it comes to children's well-being, that's everyone's concern, you know, men and women alike. So I, I, I don't see w- why this happens. And I, I think it's a shame this it happens. I, you know, I, I would like it if everyone was able to focus on the important issues of the time. But, you know, generally today, as we said earlier, you know, we live in a kind of world of identity politics where one's identity is kind of, the, you know, the most important thing about them. But I, I don't go into these conversations, particularly thinking, you know, I am a man. I'm just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a human who's got concerns and I want to talk about it. Yeah, and I think shutting down an entire group of people or placing a pejorative on you, like all men are bad, or, you know, whatever those talking points are, I think that's nonsense. And it's just like, it's a lazy way to try to win an argument. I think everyone is allowed to have an opinion, especially if if it's something that affects your, your space, right? Like you exist in this world, you're allowed to have an opinion. And historically, like it is a man's job, quote, quote, and this is, you know, gonna flare some people up, but it is a man's job to protect children to protect women to you know be a leader so to be like you're a man you can't you can't have a seat at the table imagine if someone said that to you because you're a woman which you know has happened throughout history you're a woman you can't vote you're a woman you can't have an opinion that wasn't okay so why is it okay to do it to men i think everyone has the right to share their opinion their reality um i don't know i think i agree I, I, but again similar to what we were saying a few moments ago i think it's kind of overcompensation because, you know, women historically have been shut out of the conversation. And I'm very glad to see that they are speaking up. And thankfully, there's a lot of strong women out there, a lot of strong women's rights groups who are, you know, really raising awareness of these issues. And I'm, I'm glad for that. But when it comes to representing children, you know, the more voices, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that you need that balance. I think that there's going to be ways that we tend to show up to to issues and problems. So for example, when I was watching that documentary, like all of these like social issues are kind of geared towards women because we tend to be more feelers. It's just whether you want to get into biology or it's cultural or 
that's irrelevant. We just tend to be more feelers and men tend to be better at like kind of like separating their emotions and then being able to kind of look at things. That's my been my experience. So if I go into something highly emotional, I can usually trust that if my husband comes in and he's like, well, let's pump the brakes on this a little bit and like look at it from this vantage point and be like, oh, I didn't see that. And then I can start trying to like wrestle with whatever thought experiment that it is. So I think you definitely need that balance. Like you need that yin and that yang and to like, again, shut off an entire sex and say you're not welcome at the table or allowed to show us what you see. I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. Yeah. I mean, look, men and women are very similar in some ways, but we're very different in other ways. I mean, that's actually kind of the whole point of the argument here is that there is a difference between sexes. So yeah, if we want as much kind of diversity of thought, then I think men and women need to be, you know, cooperating together on this. So it's, it's you know, I, I, I find it's a kind of ongoing frustration, but, you know, I'm not going to stop speaking out about it because it's 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 too important. But I just, I just wish we could focus on the issue at hand um, and not get bogged down in this. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't choose to be a man anyone any more than anyone else, cho- you know, chose to be a woman. At the end of the day, I just, I'd like us to all treat each other with kind of, you know, I mean, we're striving for equality, aren't we? And actually, a lot of the people you know, who are high up in organisations who are kind of pushing this gender ideology and facilitating it are men. Right. So, I, you know, I, I want to be able to speak to as many men as possible. I'm trying to encourage more men to speak out about these issues. Um, and I think if men are, are afraid to speak out because they think they're going to be shut down and told to stay out of it, then I think that's a real issue for all of us. Mm-hmm.